I believe it was Plato who once said that coffee is the essence of life. And so when you're backpacking, I don't want you to miss out on that essence of life. So I take my philosophy seriously, so I have assembled a test that I am going to perform in front of you all about how to do the best backcountry coffee for your backpacking experience. Before we get into the video here, I would like to ask a quick favor. If you've been enjoying our video series, please like and subscribe to our channel. We want to get you outside as much as possible and enjoying it as much as possible, of course. So without further ado, let's look at the best ways to make coffee in the backcountry. Okay, I have assembled a handful of options here for making coffee. Most of these I've used already, and I just wanted to run through the gamut uh, in order to show you ones that I enjoy and what you can do uh, from simple to slightly more complicated for those coffee connoisseurs out there. If you tr truly love coffee, well, don't worry. Even when you're backpacking, you too can have great coffee. So in our lineup here, we're going to go from simplest all the way down to uh, the option for the biggest connoisseur out there. So, first of all, we have Alpine Starts, which are an amazing instant coffee that I have talked about many times across my work in Epic Trails and throughout the YouTube universe here. I've referred to it because it is the most dead simple and easy and tasty option that I have come across. However, it's not the only one, so I wanted to talk about the others as well. If you enjoy a pour over from your local barista, well, we have a pour over option here for you. This little contraption is from GSI Outdoors, and it is a very simple device that you just simply put some coffee grounds in, add some boiling water on top, the water seeps down and into your cup after steeping and makes a delicious cup of coffee. That is another awesome way to do coffee. The only thing is that you need to be bringing some grounds out there, out in the backcountry with you. Now, for those of you who are a little bit more rustic in nature, perhaps the inner cowboy is kicking in, well, we've got an option for you as well. That's called cowboy coffee. I've got a pot of water here, and I'm just gonna be boiling it up. We're not filtering it. Your beard is your filter, your mustache is your filter, and probably your teeth is also your filter. And that's just pouring ground straight into boiling water and making it the old fashioned way. And last but not least, we're going to be looking at the AeroPress. This is a option that I think is a stellar option if you are truly passionate about your espresso beans. So we're going to look at how to do all of these. But first up, let's just start with the instant coffee option. So the main reason why I like Alpine Start is just its sheer simplicity. So it comes in two forms. You can either backpack with a canister like this, which I enjoy because it reduces waste, or you can use the single serving packet, which is as easy as it gets. One of these is one cup of coffee. Uh, the only downside is, is that it creates a little bit of extra waste. However, it is the easiest option out there. I've got a few extras here, just in case this goes terribly awry. One thing that I recommend here it's a simple thing to overlook, but I recommend putting the coffee in your cup before you add the boiling water. The reason for that is once you add the boiling water, it'll be steaming, and that steam will actually collect around this little edge here and make it really hard for this coffee to actually exit the tube. So if you put it in first, you'll save yourself some aggravation. Okay, we got our water boiling here, which basically means your coffee is done. Just pour a cup, and voila, your coffee is ready. Might be a little hot. Don't sue me. Hits the spot every time. So that one's as easy as it gets. Now, let's take a look at the pour over option. So I was just actually at the store and came across this alternative option as well. So I figured I might as well try it out. This is from Kuju Coffee. Never heard of it, but it was at the checkout line and I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So I figured I would try. This is like a single serving pour over. So we'll try that as well as with this GSI version. I do recommend pre-grinding your coffee. Makes things a lot easier. And then you can just add a spoonful or two of coffee here to the 
pour over. If you don't pre-grind your coffee, I do have a backpacking option for a backpacking grinder. If you're really going ham on your coffee, that's the thing to use. Roughly two, two and a half scoops I think is about right. Can be easy to get a little aggressive, get stars in your eyes and add a little too much coffee, in which case it becomes really thick coffee. Now, the next step is simply just slowly pouring water over. I like to look and uh, see at the color at which the coffee is actually coming out from below. If it looks like it's a little too pale, then you might want to add a little bit more coffee to it and actually have it filter through more coffee. And that will also slow down how fast the water goes through this little satchel and uh, will create a darker, richer coffee. Just let the last bits of that water drain out. Sometimes I'll just try to squeeze a little bit of that extra water out and set this aside and then make sure that you properly dispose of your coffee grounds. Usually they're packing it with you or possibly dispersing it in a reasonable and ethical manner. Moment of truth. That is still a fine cup of coffee. I think I may have gone a tiny bit light on the coffee grounds. I'll probably add another half scoop there. I uh, felt like the water was coming out a little bit pale, a little bit light brown. I like my coffee rich and dark, but for some people that's probably just right there, two and a half scoops. Let's try the other pour over. Again, this is from Kuju Coffee. There we go. All right. Let's see the newcomer, Let's see how she did. Aromatic. Well, I won't give it five stars. Sorry, Kuju. It's a good product, cool design, makes a lot of sense. Not super impressed with the actual coffee itself, but if that's what you can get your hands on, it's at least worth drinking. <laughs> How's that for a ringing endorsement? <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty good coffee. It's just not as good as what I like in some of these other tests so far. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one to the side. Now, next in our test is the cowboy coffee. Now, this is the roughest and toughest way to make the coffee, and it is not gonna be for everybody but I've got a pot of hot water here. I'm gonna get it back up to boil and then I'm just gonna put some grounds uh, just straight into that pot of water and uh, let it steep a little bit and then I'm gonna pour it thick and black and grimy and gritty and then I'm gonna drink it. So let that get up to boil here. Woo! Holy! Okay, don't think it needs to be actively boiling all the way. Let's give that a stir. I really only recommend this option if you are desperate or if you're on a cattle drive. Now the real trick with cowboy coffee is getting the grounds to not sit and float on the top of the surface of the coffee. Because then, of course, as you pour that, you're just going to pour a ton of grounds into your coffee cup. So I've heard a couple of different theories. If you tap on it on the side, that helps sort of settle things. And then if you add a little bit of cold water to the top, that that can help push those coffee grounds down. Nothing is going to be perfect. You're still going to be filtering that coffee with your teeth. But let's try to add a little bit of cold water here and see if we can get that to settle down a little bit. Let's add a little bit of cold water. There we go. Seems to push those grounds down a little bit. Let's see just how gritty this is. A 
Oh, you can see lots of coffee grounds making it in. But there we go. Now it's some clean coffee. All right. I think that's not too bad. Mmm. Yeah. That's that filter I was talking about. Mmm. Okay. If you're Ron Swanson, you will love Cowboy Coffee. For everybody else, I recommend one of these other options. Just wanted to let you know what people have been doing on the trail for hundreds of years until we invented the AeroPress. Let's dive into the AeroPress now. So this is the AeroPress, uh, and this is actually one of their new camp or travel versions of it. It's kind of the same as it's always been, but it comes with this handy little carrying case. Now this is a little bit more elaborate than most backpackers are gonna be willing to carry. And it's actually probably a much better version for just general camping for having some fine coffee while you're camping. But I've worked with quite a few people that are desperate for good coffee. And so they've backpacked with these and I've backed with this and I've backpacked with this and I've loved the coffee that comes out of the AeroPress. So basically what makes this unique is that you use this chamber here to create a vacuum and it creates a bit of extra pressure so that you are, as you plunge the water through, it is forcing that, it's pressurizing this chamber and forcing the hot water through, kind of like what happens when a barista is pulling a shot at your favorite coffee shop. That hot water is being pushed through the grounds and forcing that espresso out and making that really rich coffee. So this is more like making an Americano than it is like any of these other options here. So there's kind of two ways that people really go about building this. I will go from the more straightforward and easiest way and the least likely to screw it up way and uh, let you know about the other way as well if you are really a coffee connoisseur. So it comes with these paper filters. You can also purchase steel filters if you don't want to use the paper and either make great cup of coffee. I like to use the steel ones myself, uh, but I don't have one right now, so using the paper. Okay, then you pour roughly a scoop. Comes with this measuring kit. Down below, roughly a scoop and a half. Obviously all of these measurements are based on whatever your preference is gonna be. Now, let's add some hot water here. Fill it basically to the top. This is how serious it gets. It even comes with a little stirrer stick. Make sure all those grounds get wet. Add just a little bit more water to top it up. Add the vacuum seal. Give that a little bit of time. The instructions say 10 seconds. I think it needs a little bit more time than that for the proper coffee steeping time. But uh, again, that's up to you and your preference. Then you simply press it kind of French press style creates that pressure, pushes the coffee or the water through the coffee, get it all the way down. Let that last little bit drip out. Oh, and there we go. Fine AeroPress coffee. That, my friends, is a damn good cup of coffee. Whoo, baby! Okay, we've got our options here. I'm pretty sure that none of you are gonna run off and go try the cowboy coffee option 
but there are many good options for backcountry coffee. You don't have to skimp on it. It is one of the true joys is waking up in the wilderness in a beautiful place, watching that sunrise and drinking that cup of coffee, just like at your favorite barista shop, except maybe you're overlooking the Grand Canyon or somewhere spectacular. Well, there you have it. That is all of the ways in which you can make coffee in the backcountry. I have enjoyed this experience and I am now well caffeinated and full of energy and ready to hit the trail. I hope you are too. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Stick around for more because we have lots of videos that are out here to educate and inspire and help you get outside. But this is definitely the most caffeinated video that we've made so far. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. I'll see you later. <laughs> so many coffee grounds still in my teeth. <laughs>